Welcome back to the show, Marvels. How in the heck are you? Dana and I are back for yet another episode. We're sensing that you might be interested in <laughs> learning about sense a little bit more, maybe a deeper dive into sensory sensitivity and mm. what it looks like. How's that? How many times can you use the word sense in a sentence? Does it make sense that you sense things sensorily? Uh, sensically surrounding. I see. I went away from sense. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> we were talking yes. we, in, the, in a different episode. We were saying like two things that Gwen and I noticed the most, like the hallmark. I made myself a little dizzy even laughing there. Oh, I'm gonna enjoy that for a second. There we go. Okay, uh, how we the the sort of the hallmarks of neurodivergence are cognitive which I always see like the hamster on the wheel, the racing kind of move. Yeah, thinking. And yeah. then the sensory pieces are really uh, a cornerstone of that. And I've gotten kind of in arguments with other people about this that say that they're autistic and they don't have any sensory sensitivities. And they're like, well, look at the DSM. You can do it. With I'm like, well, is that really the case? Or are you just, are you just not really aware of what your sensitivities are? Because I think once you start paying attention, I think the first time I went online and took like an Aspie test at the time, I wasn't honest with myself. You know, I, I came out still looking neurodivergent, but not as far over as I am now. And things like, you know, if I, I think things like if I heard a, a noise that was annoying, would it distract me? I mean, I think for anybody that would. And so I probably put something in the middle and now I'm like, yeah, I, I would want to murder somebody if I couldn't stop the noise, you know, it's a little further over. So yeah. I think that everybody has slightly different triggers. And in my experience, there tends to be one or two that predominate in each individual person. For me, the thing that'll hijack my brain more than anything is a smell that I don't like, or it's too strong and I can't get away from it. Other sensory sensitivities, I can kind of do some things about, but the smell one, I just have to, I'm out. And I've known other people that it's more like light or touch or some other sorts of things. Um, and it kind of can vary from person to person. I think that's more often the, the, the misnomer that people don't realize where, it, and it can be something totally internal that no one else can see. And that person isn't even, doesn't share that they are losing their mind, right? So I think that's what happens when people are saying, I don't have any sensory sensitivities. And I'm like, let's dig a little into that because you probably yeah. do if you, if you really have all these other pieces, right? I feel like this is like a neurological thing, you know, and yeah. this is neurological, I, yeah. you know, and, and I have met many who have sensory issues uh, who are not autistic. Yeah. But I have yeah. never, ever supported an autistic that doesn't have sensory issues. Exactly. I, yes. I will say it is for me, it, it's, and it's, and when I, we get into the, and you know, this is in particularly for our hidden disability people, right? Um, yeah. Particularly yeah. for our, our very, you know, our verbal, um, mm. smart, you know, um, individuals, where that have the capacity to mask more mask. those variables yeah. would they're be masking help you in masking yeah. yeah yep yep and then when we start op <laughs> like peeling back the onion on yeah. sensory oh, yeah. that's mm -hmm. when you're like wow if we don't understand the sensory system for you we mm -hmm. actually will not be able to do energy management we yeah. won't like right so we were we in a in a previous episode Dana and I spoke about energy management over time management and how that that's a more effective framework to think yeah. about um but you know if we think about this so sensory input sensory registration which is different than sensory processing it's a part of sensory mm. processing but the mm. idea of how much information is coming into the body and brain processing meaning what how how does the brain make sense of that mm -hmm. sensory input and then output you know is you know obviously yeah. what you tend yeah. what we other people tend to see in your body 
But, you know, it. I think working with, with my clients, I have come to really appreciate that we literally aren't brains in a jar walking in, like, yeah. like walking robots, right? Like yeah. Yeah. our sensory motor system, how our yeah. body takes in the environment and what it does with it and makes sense with it Ooh. has a very, very big role in what cognition or oh, what yeah. you're thinking about, how you're thinking about things and how yeah. you are able to execute things. Yeah, yeah. And it, when we say sensory sensitivities, we really mean just that. So compared to neurotypicals, uh, uh, that neurological hyperwire, so that there are, if I were to prick your finger with the pin, um, how much are you feeling that, right? The average person. And so literally, you're going to have more uh, sensory connectors in the end of your skin if that's a sensitivity thing for you. You're going to have more uh, hyper nerve tracts going to your brain if you have that sensitivity. You're going to have your brain go more than, you know, for lack, that's my technical description of what happens in the brain. It's very scientific. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and maybe even sort of rattle around in there and get caught in there more than, and have a harder time repressing the feeling again, right? So you can yeah. get a sensory sensitivity and then you can get into that heightened place of like, you know, meltdown or like, oh, and a neurotypical is going to be able to do things to calm that down and unhook their brain from it that are, that are automatic, that are, um, uh, what we we call ego syntonic, meaning I can make a decision and do this consciously to unhook from this. Whereas a autistic person or even an ADHD neuro, neurodiverse person isn't going to be able to just decide to unhook from that. They're going to have to like stop the source of the irritation or the sensory input, let's say. And it doesn't have to be something irritating. I a, a big watershed moment for me was why was I always kind of nauseated and feeling exhausted on Thanksgiving when I used to eat meat and loved turkey. As the day would go on, those those smells get bigger in the house. And we would joke and say, we still joke and say, oh my God, it makes me want to eat it so much. The smells are driving me crazy. But I would realize that I was like exhausted. And it was because my I kept going and like my brain couldn't not smell it intensely. And then I was just mm. drained from it so that by the mm. time dinner came around, I was almost always dysregulated as a kid and I was mm. exhausted. And I just was like, let's just eat dinner and go to bed. I don't want to do this. And it was a watershed moment for me that even a really good, a good smell that I enjoyed, but was the intensity was so big and it was up to, over such a long duration that mm. it just exhausted me. Right. When we yeah. go to Mariner baseball games, we went to one recently and I was like, oh, I don't smell the garlic. They sell garlic fries at this. And Dana we has talked about the infamous garlic fries at the Yes, Mariners we were way, finally everyone. sitting in a section that I couldn't smell it and I could pay attention to the game better. I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. Oh, so that's a it, section you need to sit it, in from now it, on. It's a good smell. It's just so intense. So it doesn't necessarily have to be something that's irritating. It can also be something that you don't notice. I would read an article about how LED lights work and the reason they last so long. They're literally, the light isn't on all the time. They're constantly flickering on and off at a different rate than fluorescent lights do. Because a lot of people know fluorescent lights bug them. LED mm -hmm. lights go off and on at a frequency and a randomness that the human eyes and brain can't pick up consciously. But for those that are photosensitive, they're going to be like, why do I have a migraine? Why do I have a headache? And they're near these lights that they're picking up on that. So it might not even be something that you're consciously aware of like the smell, it might be like, why am I exhausted? I started this new job, why am I exhausted? When they put new carpeting in where I used to work, I sort of liked the new carpet smell, but I was plowed every day when I got home just from smelling that all day. So it's a, it's a it, whereas someone else might be irritated by it, a neurotypical person like, well, I smell carpeting all day. It'll just send you into dysregulation and barely being able to function and feeling physically exhausted. Right? And this is not a choice. I mean, I, I want to be really clear yeah. that th this is neurological mm -hmm. wiring and input. Yeah. So uh, we know from research, actually, that autistic brains in particular um, have less pruning 
at the neural yeah. network level, right? Yeah. So meaning instead of there being one or two wires, there mm -hmm. might be 10, 20, 40, 50 wires. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's why the, it, the, the overwhelm can happen so quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and that I, I love this, this, this piece that you're highlighting, Dana, which is you can still become fatigued and overwhelmed <coughs> by doing stuff that you enjoy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it just means that, you know, you're having to, to manage way more input, mm -hmm. way more information than yeah. your neurotypical counterpart, let's just say. Yeah. Yeah. About yeah. the same thing. That That's why what is irksome and mm -hmm. can be habituated for one person mm -hmm. is overwhelming and dysregulating for another. Yeah. And that's yeah. not because that's a choice. Right. Yeah. It really is that kind of princess and the pea. For those that don't know that reference, you can have 12 mattresses and there's one little pea under the first one and uh, a neurodiverse uh, person is going to feel it and then can't tune it out uh, just because they decide to tune it out. Right. In fact, yeah. the more you get hooked into it and the more those neural pathways keep firing, the more it gets stuck on that. I uh, was, I had surgery on, I have EDS as those of you guys I had surgery on a different hand a couple of years ago and it was a different spot and the, the splint was longer. And I have these bony little, we call them my Tyrannosaurus Rex arms because they're so skinny, no matter what I do. Um, so it, it's these hard plastic splints they give you. And it was just sitting against my skin. It was, it was, it, it hurt, right? It got to the point where it hurt so bad, even just having the splint on. I remember trying to go to bed one night and just starting to cry because I was like, I can't stop this. I went in the next day, told the uh, therapist, and she said, well, we need to keep you in the splint. We need to keep the still. But what you can do when you're just sitting doing nothing, just take the splint off and just let your arm sit. Like if you're watching TV, just let it be out of the splint. And I, as soon as she said that, I because I teach about this in my neuropsych class, I was like, oh, yeah, we're trying to get my brain time away from the stimulus right? so that it can stop perseverating on it. So we know that that's true for every brain, neurodiverse or not. If you have a stimulus like that's painful, the longer it's there, the more your brain will be like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. And you have to have time without the oh, my God for it to stop. And in a yep. neurodivergent person, it was even worse. And I did that. I would just sit there for hours without the splint on. And then sure enough, that night I was able to fall asleep, no problem. But there had to be like this sort of getting away from it and having time to have my brain unhook from it. And if you're if you don't know what your triggers are and you don't know why you're feeling a certain way again, I go back to kids and people haven't haven't learned or don't know what's going on with them. They are going to go straight from seemingly fine to the observer to having a meltdown, and then you know to the outside person, they're like, "What the? How did that? Where did that come from?" Mm -hmm. It seems to come out of the blue, but it's actually been building for a long time. Right? Yep. Yep, yep. Yep. Yeah. And so, and these are unseen things, you guys, like yeah, this is, yeah. there's not like a, a gauge or a valve or something that mm -hmm. you can see. This is really back to self-awareness again yeah. and how these things impact you. Yeah. Um, and, you know, sometimes there are just things that you can do in your environments where you don't even have to use any bandwidth on it. You know, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. for me, having a tidy home yeah. uh, visually is really important for me. And I just know like a, a cupboard that's kind of cracked open and, and we've, we, mm -hmm. you know, we talked about my, my own, I tick some of the neurodivergent boxes. Yeah, um, yeah. but for me, I'm, very, very sensitive to visual stimulus. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. if things are out of place, um, I can be, I, I need to, I need to, I just, I need to fix it. You need it. to fix it. Yeah. Yeah, totally. You know, yeah. so um, like, for example, so um, off air, we had a little bit of a funny thing with our, um, our taping situation with our yeah. overlay. Uh, and I just realized, and Dana, your box so was smaller. Yeah, my box yeah. is smaller. And yeah. I fought everything to put that aside so that mm -hmm. we could tape and I wasn't going to fix it because inevitably I would try to fix it while we were talking. And then I would have a situation where it was worse. Yeah. And yeah. then, and the word tape, right? And I really needed to work through that. I mean, in the beginning yeah. of, of our taping in order to yeah. put that aside and I'll fix it yeah. later, but 
And I, you're really good at that. Like if we're talking and you say, I just need a second and I know enough about you now to just stop talking. Like, yeah, fix it. Let's give you fix some it. space to fix that. Yeah. So it really does sort of that. fit like knowing the person you're with and yeah. what they need too can really make a huge difference. Yeah. 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 Yep. And it's not a big deal, you know, mm -hmm. that this happens uh, in, in my sessions because I see a lot of teenagers and a lot of young adults mm -hmm. who are still living with their parents. Yeah. And um, I am a come as you are person. So mm -hmm. if we're on Zoom and you don't want your camera on, yeah, yeah. I'm cool yeah. with that. Like, yeah. I, I don't need you squarely looking at me in the box. And that really disturbs yeah. a lot of parents, actually, because yeah. yeah. they're like, yeah. then they're not paying attention. I was like, no, 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 actually not. Or yeah. if there's something bothering my client, like they're itchy or something, so I'll just say, mm -hmm. go take care of it. Go take care like, of it. Yeah. Like, right. it will be a two minute situation. Go yeah. take care of yourself. Come back. Yeah. And then we'll be right back on track yeah. again. And that's really yeah. bothersome for some neurotypicals. Uh, when they're watching this, it's oh. it, it, it doesn't compute for them. And they feel like there is a very specific way in which to do yeah. Yeah. X, Y, and Z. When it's like, that's actually not what this is about. That's not what our yeah. work is about. Exactly. And that, I mean, that my wife is not autistic, but ticks some boxes too. And as you're talking now, I'm just having a realization. Sometimes she'll be in the middle of just texting or doing a Facebook post. And something's really important that I have to tell her and she'll say, just a second, kind of like you do. But I'm like, could you not have to finish it? Couldn't you go back to it? And I just realized now I'm like, oh, she does sort of have this completion need. And her if her attention gets pulled away, she does have a hard time going back to it. So that's yeah. useful to know about other people. I need to be like, and I do. Yeah, usually I just wait, but it's it's been annoying to me in the past. And now I'm like, oh, okay, that's what that is. And now it's not I can personal. Be, I can give more grace to that, and that's what's so helpful about talking about all the stuff and um, yeah. having awareness, not just in you, but in other people too. Yeah. 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 Giving grace. Yeah. Yeah. And you do have to have it with it. You do have to have the knowledge within yourself in order to inform mm -hmm. others that it right. isn't a personal situation. Like yeah, I can see yeah. that situation turning into, you don't care about me. I'm secondary right. to your social yeah. account. Like wh yeah. whatever that is yeah. when for her, it's like, just give me one second to finish this. And, I, and then you, I'm then all my, I have undivided attention Yeah, exactly. for you yeah, yeah. here. So, yeah. you know, creating that space um, mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. so, so critical. But yeah, this, the sensory components, you know, which are hidden components, I think are the things that get most overlooked, mm -hmm, but yet mm -hmm. are some of the biggest culprits of energy draining yeah. and irritability uh, and agitation. Absolutely. Yep. 100%. Yep. So, um, yeah. Yeah, you guys just don't overest or don't underestimate the the role of the sensory system yeah, in your yeah. life. Um, and I've even done where I've I've done this and I've taught clients that are new to realizing this to to do a inventory. Is something in my vision? Is it my smelling something? Is it taste? Mm -hmm. Is it sound? Mm -hmm. Is it on my skin? Mm -hmm. Is it in my sort of balance? I mean, go through all those sensory input things mm -hmm. to see if it's something there you know, so you can identify it, right? Have you noticed, Dana, more and more ads about sensory-friendly clothing? I have not, but I'm glad to hear that. I, I don't know, and we're not sponsored by anybody. I mean, we'd like to be sponsored by Diet Coke at minimum, but uh, that's <laughs> beside the point. Um, even though the Diet Coke, I was telling Dana, has been not friendly on my stomach lately. I don't know yeah, what's going yeah. on. Yeah, huh. Um, but, um, I don't know if it's Bombas, but they're, oh, yeah. who makes those socks, those like really yeah. comfy, like give one, a buy one, give they one. They don't have a seam. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But they're making t-shirts and I swear oh. that one of their commercials is, um, without tags for sensory friendly. It's like, it's like without oh, tags for that. sensory yeah. friendly t-shirts, something like and that. That's good. And then you can also tell that they haven't really gone to neurodivergent folks to ask about it because when they do tagless, they paint the tag in there, which is awful, oh, which is worse because you can't, do because you can't cut it. it out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like I order uh, these fun little completion t-shirts for my students every year and I order from custom ink in case you're listening. Uh, and they're great. Cause I, I put a note in there once and I said, and they, I ordered them the first time I saw they had tags you can cut out. 
And then they put it, I said, they put a printed tag right underneath it. And I said, can you not do that? Um, I, these are for sensory folks and I, we, they need to be able to cut the tag out if they want to. And they were awesome about it. They were like, no problem. We won't paint it in there. But when you're buying stuff that's already done or like Bombas or something like that. Yeah. Like we, we just went to load up on Husky gear a couple of days ago and I couldn't get any of the t-shirts cause they're all painted now. It's like, damn it. There wasn't one in there that I could get, get and cut the tags out. So I bought three sweatshirts instead, which is fine. But, uh, yeah, that, knowing those things about yourself and that uh that whatever company is doing that give them feedback maybe bombas yeah. needs to know the painted tag isn't always great or if you're going to paint the tag put it somewhere where it's not going to rub like i've yeah. noticed sometimes they put the tag just where the the bottom of the t-shirt lands on your pants you're not going to feel that put it yeah. somewhere where it's not going to be intrusive yeah you know? yeah, yeah absolutely give feedback. you'd be surprised there's been a lot of foods that I've longed for that weren't in gluten-free form and the gluten-free uh, community has lobbied and companies have said, okay, it's expensive to make this, but we're going to try it. You got to buy it. And they have, people have bought it and they're like, great. And that's where we see this big ballooning of gluten-free foods and how it wasn't like that before. So yes, yeah. give feedback and let it be known. And not just yeah. not just neurodivergent people appreciate those soft fabrics, not your itchy tags and things like that. I mean, we should do an episode on how neurotypical people benefit oh, yeah. from the disability community. Yeah. Because yeah, there, there are lots of things yeah. in our community that neurotypical people take for granted that yes. are there because yes. of the disability community. That's right. And so yeah. This is this is a really but but advocate again. Know what you know what's good. Mm -hmm. Advocate, give feedback. Like mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. how how do how do we how do we ride that? But yeah, this yeah. the sensory pieces is, is it's just a hidden component that you know yeah. I don't know. Like if if I were to redo the DSM, you know I would I probably add those two. Yeah. Um, oh, I and would have change. It, have it more prominent. Sorry, yeah. And have it more prominent. A little more. Yeah. Not just yeah. no because I think what the DSM focuses on is repetition. Is is mm -hmm. the stereo the stereotypic repetition yeah. uh, or stimming when that's not necessarily the piece? So yeah. um, it it, that's hit, what they it say doesn't is pathological and needs to be extinguished is the visible stimming, which is a problem. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. we've talked about this before. Please yep. do not, please do yep. not stop people's stims. Yeah. Uh, when they're not harmful, by the way. Yeah, I mean, obviously right. Dana and I are yeah. down for harmful stimming and there are, right. there, there are harm, there's harmful stimming out there, yeah, there is, um, yeah. that we are not down for, but un mm -hmm. stimming that's not harming, uh, let's knock that right out, please. That's right. Yeah. Cool. Okay. All right. I got the most right, glorious. Everyone. Yeah. I don't know if you're going to be able to Ooh, that's that. a fidget spinner. Is that a fidget spinner ring? Yeah, it's, uh, and I found this on, uh, oh, darn it, t t not Tiva, Temu. Oh, the Timu, the Timu, Timu or whatever, Timu. T -M -U. I see that on the Yeah, so I, we had a, a knob on our washing machine that had the most glorious one. You'd spin it, it would make that kind of, and then, of course, I got a new washing machine. I'm like, I was loathing the day I didn't get that damn thing out of the washing machine. So I've searched high and low. What's so great about these is they have slightly different rings and they have magnets inside that you can put in or take out depending on the kind of click you want. Do you want it to be have a lot of resistance? Do you, I have one of these that has no magnets, so it just spins. And then this one's just the right amount of, so they're get they're listening. And this person that, that has this on that site, I don't know if they're merger burden or not, but they mark it in that the, the user can customize, can customize it. And that's gotta be from getting feedback. Totally. It's so awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. So find, you that's know, amazing. ways to stim and everybody. And I gave it to my wife and she spun it. And she's like, that's so satisfying. I'm like, yeah, exactly. That's the whole idea. Yeah. Yeah, so, for sure. Take care of yourself, is a everyone. Way of dealing with sensitivity. Absolutely. It's it's regulating and organizing. That's yeah. what people need to if when when we reframe stimming as regulating and organizing. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of pathological and dysfunctional, yeah. we yeah. get we tend to see that it's, it's serving a purpose and a function that's good for the person. So exactly. we don't want to stop those things. That's right. All yeah. right, everyone. As Dana says, be good to you. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Um, Jomo. Oh, sorry. I'm jo just going to end off with Jomo. Different episode. It, well, Joy well, of if, missing out. 
By yeah. the way, if if you don't if you didn't know what Jomo was, it means that you didn't watch our episode that our episode right before this one. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah, watch that. Watch that one. Watch that we one. All right. <laughs> Bye everyone. We'll see you in the next Bye, episode. Everybody. Bye.